In this video, we're going to talk about buoyancy. Buoyancy is an upward force. This force is present anytime you submerge an object in a fluid. The fluid could be water or it could even be air. The buoyant force is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. And so it's equal to the density of the fluid times the volume of the submerged object times the gravitational acceleration. Now you can't really change the density of the fluid. The density of water is for the most part fixed. It's one gram per milliliter or a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. That's the density of water. But you could change the volume of the submerged object. If you increase the volume, the buoyant force will increase. The buoyant force is opposite in direction to the weight of the object. Gravity wants to bring the object down, but the upward buoyant force wants to lift it up. And so anytime you hold an object and if you put it underwater, you could feel that it, it feels lighter underwater than when you raise it out of water. For example, if you were to take a brick in your hand, it would feel heavy in your hand, but if you were to place it underwater, it's going to feel lighter. And this is due to the upward buoyant force, which makes it feel like the weight is less. It doesn't really change the weight of the object, but the apparent weight of what you're feeling is less than the actual weight of the object. Now, how is the buoyant force created? What causes the upward buoyant force? The answer has to do with pressure. The deeper you go in water, the greater the pressure. The pressure in water is equal to the density of the fluid times the gravitational acceleration times the depth. So pressure is higher at lower levels or the deeper you go in the water. So let's say this is point A and point B. The pressure at point A is higher than the pressure at point B because A is deeper in water than B. So we have a higher pressure exerted on the lower part of the object and a lower pressure on the upper part of the object. Whenever you have a difference in pressure, there's going to be a net force. And the net force created by those, difference, those differences in pressure is the upward buoyant force. Pressure and force are directly related. Pressure is force over area. So if you can increase the pressure, you can increase the force acting on an object. And so that's what creates this upward buoyant force. It's due to the difference in pressure on the upper and lower parts of the submerged object. The concept of buoyancy is related to why certain objects sink in water, whereas other objects float in water. And the real answer is due to the relative density between the object and the fluid that it is submerged in. In the case of water, if we were to put an object that has a higher density than water, that object is going to sink. If we put an object that has a lower density than water, it's going to float. And here's a, a demonstration that's going to show that. Consider this picture. We could see that the wooden sphere is floating on water, whereas the penny and a the quarter, they're at the bottom. Why is that? The answer is due to density. Some wooden materials have a density of 0.7 grams per milliliter, which is less than the density of water, the density of water being one gram per milliliter. And that's why the wooden sphere floats on water. It's less dense than water. Copper has a density of 8.9 grams per milliliter, and zinc has a density of seven grams per milliliter. Both have a higher density than water, and that's why they sink to the bottom. So anytime you place an object with a higher density than water in water, it's going to sink. And if you place an object with a lower density than water, it will float. Here's a fun fact for you. You can actually estimate the density of the wooden sphere by estimating the volume of the sphere that is submerged underwater. So let's say that 
of the volume of the sphere is below the surface of the water. That means that the density of the wooden sphere is 80% of the density of water, which would be 0.8 grams per milliliter. Now that's just an estimation, it's not the exact answer. I have a video that explains how to calculate the density of an object that is submerged underwater and how to calculate the fractional part that is below the surface of the water if you know the density. So I'm going to post a link to that video in the description section below so you can take a look at that if you uh, want to get more info on this topic. So here is another picture that really demonstrates the concept of buoyancy. The wooden sphere wants to float to the top, but it can't because of this copper wire. As a result, a state of equilibrium is reached. So the upward buoyant force is enough to overcome or to balance out the tension force that the rope exerts on the sphere and the weight force of the sphere, such that this wooden sphere remains suspended in water. So let's draw a free body diagram, which is a diagram that shows all the relative forces acting on the object. So we have an upward buoyant force that wants to pull the wooden sphere to the top, as we've mentioned before. And then there's the weight force where gravity wants to bring the sphere down. And then there's a tension force that is acting through the rope, or in this case, the copper wire, and it prevents the sphere from rising to the top. So because the sphere remains in place, these three forces are in equilibrium with each other. The buoyant force is strong enough to equal out the tension force and the weight force. So to calculate the tension force is the difference between the buoyant force and the weight force. And I have another video that has uh, example problems on how to go about calculating this. So you can take a look at the description section below if you want more info on this topic. So that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching.